<laughs> it is, it's, yeah, you know. Just kind of not your thing. Yeah, that's kind of the way it goes. Outdoorsy, you know. All uh, right, yeah, we're trying to think, what am I going to do while I'm gone for two weeks? Do what I always do. Nothing. <laughs> what, one of my, my favorite pastimes watching television. Clean out the third garage. What? That's work. <laughs> well, you could that hire somebody to do it. The garage We've given away a bunch of stuff. Oh. Hey, by the way, the parade will be airing again. Help me, Brad. There it is. There it is. Friday. Friday at 6, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday at 6 a.m. And then a replace country rovers on Monday, the week of Christmas. And then a run, I know, Christmas Day at 6 a couple more times. Run about 15, 20 times. Thank all you again for supporting us and being yeah. a sponsor in that. And then uh, Brian Moore, thank Let's you for letting us set up in front of Martin and Kobe. All right, Dee, what are you talking about today? Oh, well, first, uh, did an interview yesterday with former Alabama All-American West Neighbors for the podcast. It will be up on Monday. Uh, right. And really cool stories that he had to tell about growing up. I told him at the beginning, if there was such thing as a first royal family of Alabama football, football it's, it's them. Uh, and some really unusual stories came out of it. The, probably the biggest one that surprised me was he wouldn't let his boys play football. Really? Until they wanted to. boys take. played with my son. Yeah. Okay. In middle school. Middle school. Because he said he coached middle school. Yeah. Maybe. And then they went on to be a little bigger. Mm -hmm. a, 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 lot, lot bigger. a lot bigger. A lot bigger. A lot bigger. But just some really cool stuff hey, that Danny came out of it. Superman. Hey, man. When I, yeah. used, I knew Billy pretty Billy good. Was. Yeah. Just, just that whole, and just the stories about it. And what I didn't realize was uh, Billy was in Coach Bryant's first recruiting class and Wes was in his last. What yeah. type? Of, yeah, you just podcast. I know you, you've interviewed. You started with me, and you've done. Bill Which Bunch is still number one. So of what course. are you looking for? <laughs> and you interviewed Killer B. So you're going from one end to the other. Yeah, what type I first am. Are you looking for? And what have you found out? Do any of the guys have anything in common? Yeah, there are a couple of things that are coming that are coming to light. What I'm looking for is anybody, any guy who uh, has just been a success in whatever they happen to be doing. But in, in your terms, what it, what do you what view do you consider success? success? As? I, what I'm really looking for is guys who discovered what they like to do early on in life and figured out a way to make a living doing it. And that was... Well, that'd certainly be me. No one. Yeah, I mean, you're the... I mean, that makes sense, though. Yeah, I mean, you're the first example and the, still the best example that I've gotten out of, out of all of them. Killer Bees was a lot of the, the same way. Um, just these, these southern success stories, you know, because I'm all about trying to help young guys, but really any man, get his life together. And but the best know. way to do that is to learn from somebody, from a guy who already has figured it out. You go literally, when, literally, because you wanted your own morning show, it cost you your job. And you had to go out and create your own yeah, morning yeah. show. Was yeah. But you go back to somebody like Keller, too, though. His whole, their whole, his interior income, their whole income is around his comedy act. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if he ain't performing, he ain't getting paid. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but if you're not doing the morning show, you ain't getting paid. True. True. So that's the biggest, that's probably the biggest thing out of a lot of these guys I've seen is they didn't mind or they weren't scared of being totally responsible. They didn't mind being right. the brand, if you will. You know, they, they, There's no one to blame for screwing up until, unless it's yourself. Yeah, I mean, but they also liked getting paid or getting uh, compensated for their work. Right. They didn't mind putting that kind of effort and stuff into it because they knew they were going to get paid. What about how ego you? with these people you've dealt with? They've all got oh, one. Everybody's got an ego. Everybody. Everybody I've talked to so far. Yeah. Is that a major thing in their favor or is that a deterrent? Well, an ego has yes. got, like most things in life, ego can be positive or negative. It's just all in how... Both. In, yeah, yeah, it, it can both. be. It all, it all depends on uh, how you let it do you let it define you? I mean, you have to have an ego, and when I, when I say ego, the ego to me is the confidence in yourself in a lot of ways. You know, that you have that confidence that you can do this. It's just like you. You have the confidence and always had the confidence that you could do what you do. And knowing you really don't look like Brad Pitt. Well, that's just kind well, of self. That? That's just you self awareness, that. you know. Who said you look like I that? mean, you say, see. <laughs> it's just self awareness. You're like, I look like but, and it's just like Killer. Does. Killer was, uh, it, from the comments and stuff I've gotten, Killer, I think resonated more with in, than anybody I've I've interviewed yet because Killer has that confidence of when I get on Sorry. stage. I can I can do this, uh, but I think the, the the common thread again through all of it has been just this resiliency that these guys have, that they had an idea for what they wanted to do, 
and they just they went after it. Bill Donovan, great example of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bill Knew just he, he did. But Bill had confidence in. He had kind of a secret sauce to radio back in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And he knew you had to have big personalities, big contests and stuff. And he just kept going, even though people told him he was crazy for doing the, some of the stuff he did. The same way, I'm sure, with you but that people with, told people you. People doing that, though, is there, do they reach a point in that career when they've done it 20, 30, 40 years? You know, it's just another day. It's just another day. Well, I think I mean, it can. You don't have that motivation to keep like you had. 10, 20 years ago. I, I think it is, uh, you know, that's one of the things Saban has talked about a couple of times when Alabama's had a lot of success and they drop off the next year and not have as much success, and it's that humans automatically go to complacency. You don't work as hard as you did. Once you get there. a certain level of your needs met or you get to this level that you want, comfort zone. Comfort zone. your comfort zone, once you get that, only the the one percent are the ones who keep going, and that's why a guy like Saban is in that one percent because he hard. never gets in that comfort What's zone. What's the name of that book Bill Donovan gave you? Walk the walk or walk, yeah, the, walk, walk the walk? walk. Yeah, that's a good book like if anybody's so motivated. Walk, but, no, no, no. This keep going. This is good stuff. But that's one of the things I've learned. But here's the other thing that's been fascinating to me. I generally ask, uh, what are their biggest regrets? And it's amazing to me. Most of the guys have said, I don't have any. Or, or not that I don't have any, I've moved on past them. All the guys that have been really successful have figured out a way to not let their past define them. They don't talk about the bad decisions they made in getting to where they are today? Not necessarily. They'll well, say... They helped you get there. They'll say, well, that's exactly it, Gloria. They, they look at it as... They don't look at it as a negative. They look at it as... Well, that's why I am what I am. Not talking about when you're trying to be funny now, and talk, making fun of You call these things. people, and some of them, you said you just met with us. You just met yeah. the guy next door. You Cole know these people. Not most of them I don't. How, what has been their reluctance, and obviously they've all not had much, to let you interview somebody that they don't know. They don't know that you're not going to come in there and make them look like a fool. Say something. That Here's the biggest thing, and I knew this when I started the podcast, and it's this. I tell them, we turn the mic on and we record and I do not edit it. Whatever you say is what comes out. And we're going to talk for an hour, and I'm really, I'm really, uh, Conf or really conscious about staying well, within an hour. 60 minutes. Strung, no, no, no. He's structured. But that. here's the thing is when they know it's just an hour, that automatically takes away their reluctance because they might, they don't have to worry about me editing it around to make it look like they said something. I mean, just think about it. If somebody came to me and said, I want to interview you, and they gave me those parameters, I would automatically be at ease because I've done TV before where, it's, I mean, I'm standing in front of a camera, how and I don't know, know how it's going to be not, edited it out. How they yeah. know you're not doing something as a personal vendetta against them that somebody, a friend of yours, may have had against them, and He's you're Dee coming in, you're setting them up. Well, I mean, I mean clearly, it's Dee Lauderdale. <laughs> well, it's because I tell them, you know, the whole idea of the podcast is to educate and inspire the next generation of Southern gentlemen. That I'm just trying to help guys get good. Well, one thing you didn't have, friend, when you tell them now, all the ones you've done. Now they can go listen and see that I'm not. Jamie Cooper, Bill Donovan, Killer Bees. You know, you've got a different thing. It's the guy a, in Birmingham, James Spann. James Spann. Yeah. You know, a very wide range. And I've been blessed to know a lot of these guys or have friends that I could get into them because I knew if I could ever get some of those guys to do it, it would give me credibility. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, I had a friend give me a contact with Lenny Acuff, who is the men's basketball coach yeah. at UAH. And so I contacted them and said, would Coach Acuff be willing to do it? And he's, yeah, he'd love to. So we're trying to get it yeah. scheduled. So it's amazing, though, how many of these people will do this kind of stuff if you just simply ask them. So there is a common denominator. There, there is a common denominator, but I didn't want to get, I didn't want to get pigeonholed into one just one specific area. I didn't want to do just church yeah. stuff. I didn't want to do just just sports That's guys. What you did Dusty. Right. I wanted to have a wide range of folks that, that I could talk to, and I hope that's the way it continues. Interesting. D. Lauderdale. My com. microphone fixed. So you got to get your other microphone. Saturday, uh, Sunday night, Saturday night, December 20th, 20th, 5 to 6. Dusty may be with us tomorrow. Jeff Pugh's supposed to bring his seniors up here in East Limestone. Lindsay Lane Baptist Church is having a thing 5 to 6. Anything else I know about that, Don? Open to everybody. Now, of course, church every Sunday is open to everybody, too. This is a community service of hope and peace for this Christmas season. If you're so not Dusty, so happy, come on uh, out come on and down. get happy. All right. But anyway, the big thing I want to talk about, my, my oldest daughter is 24, just got married, just you finished. Do it quick. 
real quick. <laughs> like Here, made it quick. Well, That's here's what she said. She made this comment last week about some of her friends who were having a hard time getting started in life. And she said, you know what? They just got to learn to be in the habit of working. Everybody nowadays wants what we all got now. They the, want here The TV, today. the cars, yeah. the houses. Yeah. But even more than that, they never developed the habit of working. Because if you ever met anybody who learned, who came out in life just wanting to work, I did. And everybody I know who knows how to work had to learn to do it. Can you make and there's a, a habit of that if you just start doing it. Can you make a living now without mastering one of these? Or I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so in the new economy. Because the side of that is you can, you can make your own career now. You don't have to ask somebody else to do it. Because of the stuff that happens with, technology. A, with technology and with the Internet, you can make your own. But this, what Savannah was saying was so many of her friends have, have got, been out of school a year or a year and a half, or even out of grad school, and they've had four or five or three or four jobs. And she said, you know, they just need to get in the habit of working. What is that? Every, every day you have to change work. jobs like every three years? Or oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But if, you're, if you keep quitting the job because they're making you work, what in the world are you ever going to, you're never going to accomplish anything. And here's what, here's what it boils down to. You're never going to make $100,000 a year after you learn how to work or before you learn how to work. You learn how to work, then maybe you'll make 100K or 150K. Because all these successful guys that you, we've talked about, every one of them have monster work ethics. Well, if you have to work, you will. Yeah. Well, I don't fit in that category, so I must be on the other side of that. DLaudenell.com. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Joke I'll see you next want, week. But when yeah, you have to work, week. you have yeah. anyway, uh, Tomorrow, the last show of this week, and I'll take Friday That's off, right. and we'll do Tuesday. will be we'll our be last Tuesday. show. I'm afraid we just showed you when it's coming up. Don't forget to hit DLaudenell.com. Mm -hmm. We'll be back bright and early tomorrow morning. Got to go. See y'all. Bye.